Thank you. Good time. 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 Good I'm sure it'll go really well. Um, first of all, this is an interactive projector. It's a little bit different than an interactive board. With an interactive board, which some of you may have used in the past, the board would, in this case, be mounted over this beautiful marker board, and that board is interactive, and then the projector is kind of just illuminating that board. Uh, interactive meaning I can run programs with a pen or my finger, I can draw things with my pen. What Epson did is said, don't do anything to this beautiful board. Let's have the projector do all the work. So this is doing all the hard work. This board is doing all the easy work. And this is one piece of hardware. And a lot of people like it because they're able to teach with marker pens when they want. And then they can pick these up as electronic pens when they want. And they don't have to skip that area of interactive whiteboard that's in the way of the board. Okay. But we are pen based. I'll pass one of the two pens around. You should have two pens. Uh, and I'd ask you to kind of give it a look over. You'll notice inside of these two pens, uh, there is a AA rechargeable battery. Um, you want to make sure that's in there. There is an on-off switch on these pens. Um, you're going to want to make sure it's in the on position when you want to use it. If you forget to shut it off, not a big deal. It'll go into sleep mode. And then the next time you push on it, it would light up again. Okay. We use a technology called infrared. As this is passed around, if you push the pen on your hand or another hard surface, you'll notice the pen tip moves ever so slightly. And when it does, it's emitting a signal that the projector knows what to do with. Okay, that's kind of how we do it. The cool thing is, it only is, is chewing up battery power when the pen tip is moving. And think about how you teach, how you're going to touch the board. You're not often touching the board with the pen. Battery life is astronomical with this, okay? You may go the whole school year without running out of battery. Okay? But if you do run out of battery, we give you this wall charger with two additional rechargeable batteries in it. You can plug in the wall and just leave it in the wall if you want. Or if you can't find these, find any AA batteries that you can pop in the pen and they're going to work, okay? Including the two batteries that are found in the back of the remote control. So any AA batteries are going to work. There's also a folder for your pens. You might want to incorporate this somewhere into what you're doing. There's a remote control. You should all have a remote control, too. It's going to be handy for turning it on, of course. And there's some other functions on the remote control that you might want to try out. Has Matthew, has anyone seen the remotes? I mean, are, are yep, they all in the room. So they, they're all in the room. So some of them don't have, have them one, desk, so. find it. OK, or steal one from another room. <laughs> But it's important. One of the things I use on this one is called Audio Video View. The projector's actually been on the whole time while I've been talking. Uh, that could become handy if you, you know, want to gain the class's attention. If you don't want to look it up there anymore, certainly we're going to hit AV View to take care of that. Who's used an interactive board in this ever? What have you used? Well, smart board. Smart board. Yeah. Yep. Smart board. And then I got trained on this. I just don't remember. Oh, you come up here. <laughs> okay, you see the train on the bright thing already? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there are, okay, back to the boards. So, um, with boards, there is a function called calibration or orientation. And I've seen some head nods, so we kind of know what that means. What that really means is, how does the board, how in this case the projector, does it know where the pen is on the board? Well, that's because it has to be oriented or calibrated, okay? What we did really nice with this bright link is we made it an auto calibration, okay? And the remote's important because what you'll want to do once, if it hasn't been done already, and you'll know it's not done if you push this down and you see the arrow over here or over here, it's just not what it's supposed to be. The button out here called user, USDR, you hit it, it'll say auto calibration, S with your focus, you'll say okay. It's now auto-calibrating, and it's writing all that information into the projector. So you don't have to touch dots with your finger. You don't have to touch dots with a pen. You don't have to do anything, except 
If it's off, do this one time. You should never have to do that again. No matter what computer you hook up, you know, you take that computer out, you hook something else up, it should always be calibrated, okay? That's really cool, because I know a lot of these boards you're calibrating almost daily, okay? You were doing that the other night, right? The auto calibration? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it's like, I want to make sure you know it's the one time. When you fire it up every morning, you should never have to calibrate. Do because you press the pen down the arrow somewhere else. You probably want to engage Matthew and find out what's going on. Because something would be off of strange with that. Okay. All right. So um, that's my laptop running in the corner there. Uh, everything on my laptop is mirrored up here. Okay. So whatever we do. All we did with Brightlink is we created an interactive surface to run any software you want to run. Earlier I talked about the boards that some people have used. Yeah, you can use the boards, but some have also used what's known as curriculum software. Did you use smart notebook software? Yes. Yeah. That's, there's a hardware decision, even with smart products. You buy the smart hardware, boards, and projectors, and you buy the smart software. Right. No different here. You buy the Epson hardware, you buy the smart software. They work very well together, okay? There's another major board company out there called Promethean. They have a software package called Active Inspire. In the old days, you'd buy the Promethean board and you'd buy the Promethean software. Well, now you buy, in this case, I hope, the Brightman projector and the Promethean software, okay? Two different decisions. So what I want to just hammer home is any piece of software you choose to run on this, it all should work flawlessly, okay? We don't ship, by default, smart notebook software or Promethean Active Inspire software with Brightman, but it's an option for both. So if that's something you think you want, get with Matthew. Go work it out. I have Notebook here, and I have Inspire here, and as part of when you come up and try it, if you choose to, fire a Notebook and do some things on it. It should be exactly the same as if you were using a smart piece of hardware with a smart Notebook software, okay? Got it? Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but it, the unit has two pens, and it is a dual pen functionality. So within this software, dual pen. Within this software, dual pen. Within any piece of software that supports dual pen, guess what? It's dual pen. But if it doesn't support it, it would be a single pen function. And when you put the second pen down, it kind of wouldn't know what to do. Because that software programmer didn't anticipate dual pen. All right? So you've got curriculum software, and then you've got something called tools. Curriculum software are things like lessons that you can find, lessons that you can create, lessons that are in there already. Tools are just writing over stuff, or special effects, or stuff like that. Epson has free tools that you can download at your option. And I'm pretty sure, Matthew, you've downloaded tools to everyone. Should be on everyone. If not, we can get one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our tools. That's going to be my little training thing to show you. Why would you use the tools? Well, you're not running Inspire, or you're not running Notebook. And you just like to write on stuff. You've got a web page on it. You like to write on stuff. That's when you use the Epson tools, okay? And um, here they are right here. So this is what they look like, and I can bring them to either side. Um, you know, I'm gonna leave them on this side, it's a bit of viewing if I stand on this side. This is what they look like, easy interactive tools. They're free, but you have to download them, okay? And again, we believe they're downloaded on everyone's computer at this point. There is a one-page cheat sheet on these tools, which we'll make sure is available to you, but the idea with our easy interactive tools is you don't need them. First of all, there's hover capability built in, so if you go over it, it's gonna tell you what's going on, okay? And this, by the way, can be done with your mouse, too. If you're sitting at your computer, you just hover over with your mouse, you're gonna get these same pop-ups, okay? Um, I'm gonna cover some of the key ones. Right now, the mouse is shaded, so that means I'm in mouse mode, so, if I want to watch some things. Yeah, okay. So I just watched the PowerPoint. This is that kind of the mouse. That's all I really wanted to show you here is just as I could be sitting at my computer echoing the mouse, I'm in mouse mode. By the way, if these tools are closed, you're only in mouse mode. You don't have the option to draw unless you get into this mode, and then you start using some of these things down here to pick different thicknesses of lines and highlighters and stuff like that. For example, this is a thin red line. So you know, maybe I want to draw on something that's a thin red line. Okay? Uh, 
there's a thick blue line here. Maybe I want to draw that with a thick blue line, okay? Um, I have selected erasers right here. I might say, oh, that's stuck on. I don't like that. Or I might say, you know, it's time for all that to go away and I'll probably get rid of it. You already had that preset, right? Oh, I mean, what? these are the colors you were chosen. These are the like presets, yeah. Mm -hmm. But right here, you can give a more creative. I mean, it's not a huge palette, but. So that's this one right here. Very thick, green. So again, I just want to show you that that's how you draw. The bottom one is important. That's when you get rid of all those highlights. What happens is, um, let's say I draw on this. You have to, in your mind, visualize, I'm just drawing over something right now. If I want to go to the next page, it has no idea I've done that. It doesn't kind of follow what you're drawing on. So you'll probably often do that. It's going to go away. But one thing you can do is, let's say I've done this, and it's really important that I keep that for some reason. There's a diskette icon, and when I click that diskette icon, it's taking a snapshot of this. It brings up a keyboard, you save it where you want, give it a name if you want. Okay. The file format when you save it is these four commonly people use what's called PDF. Kids can usually open a PDF at home. Okay. All right. What else is cool on this? Well, if you're not, if you want to get back into mouse mode, no longer be drawing. You want to highlight that again. So that's a key one. Okay. The upper right and left. Yeah. Like, uh, is that where you can just have a white screen and write on it? Exactly. Have you used the tools yet? No, but I was. No, uh, I was no. asking about that capability. So. Yeah. There's your whiteboard. Mode. Okay. And um, you can bring up a side bar, I guess. And I already know this creates new pages. Really simple, a really simple one on the list. This is just giving you an idea. This one I'll just take for a moment. Um, I can save just like I did before, same process, except when I save on the whiteboard side, it's going to save every one of these in the file name. Whereas on the computer side, it's just that snapshot. Does that make sense? It's just one page. This one will cover everything you've done in that in that lesson. The one thing on Smart used to do where you could write and then capture it in, in Word. In, oh. in Word? Yeah, you could capture, you could highlight it in snapshot, and it would convert. Is yeah. that capability in Epson as well? No. A couple things. Number one, we made these like it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Meaning we didn't want to make them too complex. Okay. If you're running Smart Notebook, or you have the ability of smart notebook tools, mm -hmm. that's what you should want. Okay. I'm not I'm not compelling anyone to run these tools. If they work for you, run it's an them. option. It's an option. It's okay. free, it's an option, you run it if you want. There are some cool things in here on the whiteboard side. I'm here now, so I might as well show you. Um, there's some backgrounds I can put up. That, uh, if that makes sense, I, I can pick any of these that our programmers decide to put in there. Okay. But I could also, if I had a USB document camera. Uh, I could have that document camera image here and I could have drawn my images from the board. In the like, an like an elbow? Like an elbow. Or an Epson. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I meant it. <laughs> and then there's a, there's, you can download a file. Oh, wow, this is pretty exciting when I got here. Okay, so what I wanted to do here is just show. Um, it, yeah, I brought something up that was a file somewhere that I could get to. Okay, and. So that's how you get files that you got somewhere. Because quite honestly, these are these are good, but these are not everybody can use these. You know, if they work for you, great. If not, just download it, save it somewhere, and break it up. All right. So what else is here? I already showed you this earlier about that. Um, what is this? This is another way of getting importing. It seems like they've duplicated this and that. So. This is how you get rid of a page. So let's say I'm currently on this page. No more need for this page. If I hit X, it goes away. It's gone. I mean, it's gone forever. Lock that against it. Let's see. Um, what else is cool? Inside, 
inside this one, there are some special effects. I've got nothing on the screen to really wow you, but let's say move it around. And then if you want to affect the shape a little bit, just grab that edge. Okay. Um, kids can sometimes enjoy that. And then finally, there's a shade. Again, I don't have much to show you, but just kind of that. And then we want the shade. Those are all found under business, like a briefcase looking thing. You can come up later. I'm almost done. Then you'll try some of these if you want. And then here's some shapes. You know, it makes sense to have some shapes. You can do some shape stuff. These are not the end all tools. Smart tools are great. Promethean tools are great. You might have a piece of software that you like. Those tools are great. You should run the software you want. Do we still have the smart tool? Smart tool license or the smart board license went with the board. So we won't have to buy new license there. So. That will be a process. We'll have to see what people want mm -hmm. and then buy accordingly. And Smartboard just announced today that they also are bringing out a web based version. That's all I know. Okay. Wow. Um, so that might be something worth. Well, because there, there's so much that you can uh, upload that's already out there, right? You know, that's the thing about this nice stuff. Yeah, they've all got so much pre configured, you know, pre, pre made lesson plans out there to cover the gamut from A to Z for you guys. So. Makes sense to at least use The cool thing is, right, it's compatible with it. If that's the route you're deciding to go, or no one's standing in the way. Smart plays well with Epson, Prometheum plays well with Epson. Actually, every piece of software ever made should play well with Epson. If it doesn't, bring it to our attention. I, I just don't know why it wouldn't work well. Um, again, I just covered a couple of, a couple of the uh, pilot uh, icons I think you want to know about. This is an undo key. Remember earlier I had done that? And then there's a redo key. In case you delete something you didn't want to delete, to redraw it. And then these are your selected erases. This is your full erase. There's your shapes, just like before. Here's a page up, page down. Okay, if you're in some software that supports page up and page down. Again, some of the key things to remember is that's when you're in mouse mode, and when you get a color, that's when that gets unshaped, and that's when you get start drawing. It's really that simple. These are tools. Oh, here's something I want to cover. So right now, I'm using my computer, which would simulate using that desktop computer, and the tools have been downloaded on that computer. Okay, that teacher's decided to use those, okay? What if I'm on a different source? Because don't forget, this is also a really good projector. And uh, things like the cable TVs, are they hooked up? The cable? Those will be hooked up. Will be hooked up. So all the they may have too, that they can play, so. other things hooked up to this document camera. And and on the HDMI port, we currently have the television cable. We have a cable hooked up. So we stop something, or we could even let it run, and we stop an image, and we'd like to draw it. When you bring your pen up close, it launches another set of tools that look a lot like the tools I showed you a moment ago. But these tools are different, and then it's not as big a set, and they reside in the image. Okay? How do you know you've got these tools is you don't see a save icon. So anything you would do here, it's just here. It's not really going to go anywhere from here. And you can erase it if you want. There is a whiteboard mode. I hear what some teachers do is they, the kids come in early and just kind of mess around with it while you're waiting for class to start. Just put it in a mode where it has a whiteboard. But this is what I'm at a different signal. These computers here are actually in the computer signal. I'm not really expecting that. So there's onboard tools. And then there's tools like this that reside downloaded on that teacher's computer. <clears throat> that may be it, to be honest. Um, I'm going to hang around as long as you guys want. I encourage you to bring a pen up. Let's see if the second pen is diving over there. It is dual pen, so two people can do something at the same time if you want, which is kind of cool. And, uh, you know, Break. If you break it, I guess you break it, but uh, it's hard to break the bright. <laughs> it's hard to break a bright thing. Okay. Um, the pens have a three-year warranty, so if you feel your pen is acting up, let Matthew you know. We overnight replace them for free. If you lose a pen, somebody's going to have to come with forty-nine bucks because that's a big cost to get another pen. Not too bad. What about my mugs? Um, it's under fifty. I'm guessing thirty-nine. The roads are covered under the three-year warranty also, but um, I 
know they're not excessively expensive. For those of you that care, oh, what about these lamps? They're 79 bucks. So oh. if you use it like crazy, that's different. Kill a lamp after 3,000 or more hours, which is really a long time, is to really start to think about it. Uh, it's not too bad at 79 bucks. You might go over the uh, wind power off the device. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, the question came up yesterday, you know, what do you do if you're between, it's going to be off for a while, but not a long, long time. Is that where you were going on this? Yes. You know, if it's, if you just want it off for a while, hit the AV mute. What's a while? That's well, kind of subjective. We were kind of seeing 15, 30 minutes. So we were kind of, what was your position on that? Well, that was where I was deferring to you. I mean, I, I said, you know, if it's a class period, then maybe you should turn it off if you know you're not going to use it for two class periods. Or Definitely. If you're not using it for two class periods, shut it off. Because it's actually projecting black now, and it's using the lamp, that 3,000-hour lamp. It's cutting into that 3,000 hours. So um, just kind of work figured out. I mean, you're going to lunch, yeah, shut it off. Overnight, definitely shut it off. Over the weekend, definitely shut it off. Um, 15 minutes, I don't think I'd shut it off. It's, it's one of those, you, you could, you don't have to. You know. What do you think? Is that a good no, answer? I, I just don't want to you know, s switch them off every 10 minutes and turn, turn, turn back on. I would do that. that yeah, that's a nice feature. And it, you know, it used to be the older projectors, all you do is slide the cover closed and then just put it in so Oh, if they're on a, they're on a, a cart? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It also, if it's an Epson, it also had a mute, but it was so easy just to throw that cover. Oh. Yeah. 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 By the way, there's also a freeze on here, so I'm not going to do anything on my computer now, but you can actually freeze the image and do all the stuff you want on your computer. Their kids aren't going to see it, right. but when you hit freeze again, it's going to unfreeze. And I know I didn't exactly show it, but it's on the wall. So I think AV mute and freeze will be Use quite a bit, I think. and the power on and off, and possibly sourcing to other sources like your cable and kind of another thing you might hook up to. It. So with that, um, as I said, I'm going to hang around. Feel free to come up, try the pen.